Hi there. So for your consideration today is a, a mid-90s uh, Kawasaki mule. Um, that uh, purchased this off of Facebook Marketplace and it was marketed as a 1996 and we're going to try to find the VIN number, verify that and then uh, see what all is uh, see what all's wrong with this thing and decide what to uh, what to do next. But uh, you can see it's in pretty rough shape. Someone decided to uh, to change the uh, looks like the original color may have been red, and they you can they've gone in there and they've they've painted over that and uh, put some nice uh, U.S. Army uh, decaling on there. Nice stuff. Um, so the only thing that I've done to it so far is uh, the the tires were completely fat flat, and I used some uh, tire jet. I'll show you that here in a second uh, to. Uh, to try to try to plug some of the holes in those tires, it's it's similar to the uh, to the slime uh, where you put the tube in there and you, uh, you put this stuff. So um, here we go. Let me uh, show you show you that, and then we'll uh, we'll get started. First thing we're going to do is clean this thing up a little bit. Okay, so before we clean it up, I'm just kind of going to kind of show you here what we uh, what we use to uh, to air up these tires, just to make it easier to move around the yard and to uh, to get it into the garage. Uh, so this tire eject here, uh, this stuff, uh, much like you would do with a with a, a slime application or whatever, you would take your uh, valve stem removal tool here and you would unscrew your uh, your valve stem. We're not going to we're not going to do that, but you would unscrew that out of there. Um, then you would thread this on there hold it up like this and you know there's some um, instructions on on the product itself um, for the the number of ounces that you would put in there each of these um, holds about five I think um, I want to say on a tire this size they recommend 10 ounces so this is a what's that there a 20 ounce thing so you could get two tires uh, with that bag there and uh, uh, anywho so that's uh, once you do that you would you would take this back off uh, screw your screw your valve back in there, and then uh, and then it, it comes with some some little red uh, uh, caps that you can put on there, uh, just to let you know that you have in fact uh, treated that tire. Uh, so when you when you come back months later, you'll you'll know that this is a uh, we've already done this one. So, anywho, uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. I'll put a link uh, below and uh, to where you can find the tire jacked. I think I got mine off of Amazon. So. Anywho, now the uh, only thing to do now is to uh, to get to uh, cleaning this thing up. So we'll see you by the water hose. So I want to point out some obvious omissions uh, that I did not necessarily see whenever I was purchasing the unit, but that's okay. Uh, You'll see here, this area right in here looks like where a, uh, a gas tank would go. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out something uh, something there, which is probably good. I, you know, I've done a little bit of research, and I think the original um, original gas tanks on these units were metal, so there's a good chance that in uh, you know the, the 25 or so years uh, that it's, it's, it's been with us that it's, uh, it, it could likely have some fuel tank issues that you would have to deal with anyway. So, and I don't know who's hacked on this thing before. It could be possible that someone else has already decided that, uh, you know, maybe they had a, a, a fuel tank, uh, maybe a rusted out fuel tank as well, and they removed it. And, and um, you know, so we'll just, uh, we'll just go forward with the, the knowledge that we'll have to do something about that. Um, you know, one of the things that I really don't really care for right here is this, I don't know if you can see this, this uh, spark plug holder is not, it doesn't feel like it seats very well. And this, the, 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 the cable there does not give it a whole lot of room to, to seat correctly there. So I'm not sure if they've put in um, maybe an, an aftermarket coil, maybe from, from some different application and maybe that explains some of that. Um, so anyway, there's, uh, there's that. Uh, there's no top of the uh, air breather box here, uh, which is probably okay. We'll we'll uh, replace that, and or we'll, we'll replace the air filter. Um, um, you know, try to uh, try to get it going, and um, you know, maybe do a little maintenance on it. So, uh, what else? Um, some of this linkage here feels kind of weird, and some of the some of the configuration there. It, it, 
nothing feels like it it really moves so I don't know if it's rusted out or uh, or what there or maybe it's just inappropriately connected um, you know over to the carb here there's something it feels like it's full throttle all the time um, what else so looks like I think this is the the uh, locking differential on this you can see it's not connected to anything it may at one time have been connected to this wire that runs over here looks like that is connected to the parking brake uh, so it looks like here's what was connected to the differential which is I believe a parking brake um, this right here I believe uh, there used to be a box that mounted here that would have been the the, the control for the locking differential so uh, we'll have to figure out that um, <clears throat> and you can see there's uh, you know we just have a lot of wiring um, you know kind of laying here the seat needs some attention there uh, what else this looks like an amplifier wire that they have connected to the starter relay there uh, so we'll take a look at that and what else whenever we were moving it around the yard it did feel like um, the brakes um, did work uh, just a little bit so so that's good um, let's see here this uh, so it's an air-cooled engine and this is kind of neat the okay so there's some cooling apparently that takes place um, in here but it, there's also uh, this whole tube you can follow it up here and there is a vent up here I guess for uh, for air to uh, to circulate in and out of it's kind of a kind of a neat design there so all right so I guess let me get this thing moved around and we'll uh, we'll start start tearing into it all right so we're in the garage now and we need to figure out what the VIN number is on this unit so we can uh, start I guess uh, you know seeing what the the parts are and get some more history on on uh, what we're really dealing with here uh, again the guy told me it's a 96 and uh, so anyway I, I've done some research and have seen that if you can't find the VIN underneath the seat there is another one right here and I don't know let me see if I can get in closer on this um, you know, I can see the last four digits or so, um, but the rest is kind of a blur. So I'm going to use this piece of paper and pencil, and I'm going to hold it up there and try to, uh, you know, create a little sketch of it, and then uh, and then pull that away there. Okay. So you want to hold your paper like this, and just kind of lightly, lightly. Scribble across that until you get some some of the imprint beneath. So it's very faint, uh, but you can see the finished product here, and you've got a J, K, that's kind of a question mark for me there, A, F, B, B, and then uh, there's something like a, a question mark there, I'm not sure what's going in there, uh, P, B, 5, and another number here, and then a 2922. Two, two. Um, you know, so I found this document online, so I can focus here, um, that ki kind of, uh, you know, goes through the, um, the Kawasaki serial the VIN numbers and gives you information about what each of those, um, you know, what each of those digits mean. So it took me a few times, and I actually took another, another tracing, I won't bore you with that, uh, where I used a red pencil. And, you know, I think the, the red actually contrasts a little bit better. And so using this document here, I pulled in some of this information. I had a few question marks here where I wasn't sure 
was this a four or a one? Same here, same here. And then um, was you know kind of able to figure out, all right, well, these, these digits here, I don't believe a four was an option. So the, the first three digits um, identified it as a Kawasaki mule. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the fourth digit there, the, the F, I think it also was a mule. Um, that digit 300 CC. Um, here's uh, th these next two are important. I believe the what did that turn out to be? That was a B1 right here. So that means it's a model B1. Uh, I think these were a model A, uh, model B1, and a B2 on that. So um, then this next one's a check digit. I'm not sure what that is. And then this P is important because it identified the year. And it's indeed not a 1996, but a 1993. Uh, it's made in the USA. And then those last uh, few digits there uh, relate to a production sequence. And I think I ended up going with the, the six on that because it, uh, it appeared to be a numeral and not a, uh, not an alpha character. So, um, you know, the, the, the VIN number was in pretty bad shape on there, but through this method, I was kind of able to pull out and figure out what, what I actually had here. So, um, you know, right here, we've got a, uh, Got a completed VIN number. It's a Kawasaki Mule 500 from uh, 1993. And you know what's funny to me is the the um, you know generally with a with an ATV you you think about the the numeral being the the displacement in CCs, but that's certainly not the case here. This thing is kind of underpowered with uh, with 286 CCs, um, but I guess they uh, they preferred to just uh, to, to call it a 500. I guess they're rounding up. So. Um, Anyway, great. So now let's get a let's get a service manual so we can take a look at um, you know some of the some of the pertinent stuff on this, and we'll go from there. Here's the uh, service manual for the Kawasaki Mule 500. I believe there are a couple different variations of this manual, and you want to make sure that yours covers the the model that you have. And this is us right here, the uh, B1 there. So. Uh, See, this is part number nine 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 twenty four eleven forty six oh two. I think the O one maybe is the uh, the variation that only covers the A one uh, model. So you want to make sure you get this if that's what you're uh, you're doing. And again, I'm not a I'm not a mechanic by trade. This is just something I do as a hobby. Um, you know, so your your mileage may vary. You you may be able one of those guys that can just. Uh, look at an engine, tell you what's wrong. Um, but me, I like to have the the service manual. One of the things about this book uh, that I'm that I'm going to use is it has a, a wiring uh, diagram. Um, considering the condition of the wires on this, um, I'm going to be able to, to to help identify what some of those wires are uh, using this because it has a uh, a chart and it identifies the colors and and the function and which uh, which components they would have been originally gone to. So. Uh, for me, I think this is going to be invaluable. Another nerdy thing that I did uh, that may or may not be necessary was I picked up the uh, the owner's manual for this. Uh, again, the Mule 500 and then the, the B1 there. Um, you know, one of the interesting things in looking at this, uh, that it helped me identify, uh, you know, I guess how the, what the differential, um, the diff lock, how that looked. Because my on my unit, this, that little switch right there, it's pointing to it. Uh, with the A is uh, completely gone, uh, so if I'm going to have that to function like original, that's that's the that's the way that it's going to need to look. Uh, so you know this is probably um, you know optional. Some of the pictures are great because it shows uh, you know how nice this thing would have looked when it was new. So uh, kind of fun to uh, to look at some of those and nice little seat belt there. So uh, you know again optional, but I, I do like the uh, the information that some of these things provide. So here we go. The first thing I want to do is see if the uh, see if I can get the engine to turn over. So I pulled off the screen off of the uh, the flywheel there, and now we'll try to move that. And using a seven eighths or a twenty two millimeter, I'm going to turn the uh, crank there and see what we get. Oh, good! I can feel a little bit of compression in there, so that's also good. But I can also hear some scratching. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Let's uh, let's connect a battery here and see uh, see if we can get her to turn over.
Okay, so there's the negative. Here's our amp wire. Let's go ahead and get a clean piece there. And oh, sorry about that. All right, now we can. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so using some hardware that we found in the old junk box here, uh, we've uh, secured the terminals now. And uh, let's see if we can get her to, uh, to turn over with the key. Okay, so I've plugged the uh, connector back in here, and now the moment of truth. And nothing. Okay, so let's start at the uh, starter and see if, if we cross the, uh, the, the starter relay, if we can get some action there. Okay, we hear the we hear the starter motor running, but it doesn't sound like it's engaging the engine. Uh, so let's just verify that. I'll put you over there in front of the uh, crankshaft, and you can take a look. Okay, if you could keep your eye on this and see if we get any action out of that while I uh, try to cross those relays, uh, we'll we'll see what, what what happens. And as we suspected, there's no, there's no motion here. So what there is, there's a, a clutch inside that starter, I believe, that we're going to have to uh, replace. So uh, that'll have to wait until next episode. I'm going to have to order that part. And with that, uh, please subscribe if you want to uh, make sure that you catch the next episode, see what happens, uh, see if we can get this thing running. Um, you know, thanks for watching. If you like the video, uh, please hit that thumbs up button. And hope to see you next time.